Hi everybody! I've had a lot of attention lately with my pipette painting and I thought today I would just try and go real slow and let you know exactly what I do and how I do it and hope it helps you out. Now I've talked about this before and y'all have seen these. These are my little plastic trays. Every time I get a fruit cup at the store I keep these and then I pour my inks into them. So as you can see they're dry. See? They're dry right now. All right, that's what I love about it because you can pour your inks in here, use them, and then all you have to do is take some water and spritz it in there, and that reactivates the water. So it makes it portable, easy, and I love it. So when I have a new cup, like I think I'm going to be using orange, this is actually yellow, but it dries orange looking, but that's yellow. I'm going to take some of this, and this is a really old ink I have. I've had it for ages. But this is what I do. I normally just pour some in here. And that's it. Okay. So, let's take a pipette. These are pipettes. They're little squeezable tubes, nice and soft. They have markings as to, you know, how you can fill them up. But for this, you don't really have to worry about that. So, I'm going to start with a color, and I think I'm going to, actually I think I'm going to start with brown, it's a little unusual, it's got, this one has brown in it, it has gold sprayed in it, it has a lot of different colors, so after I spray my water in there, I'm just going to reactivate the paints, swirl them around a little bit. And I don't really want a darker color. If I want a darker color, I could add more brown. But this is going to be kind of an outlining. And I'm going to take my pipette. So what you do is you squeeze the bulb first. <laughs> Oops. And then you put it in your ink or your watercolor, whatever that you're using. And you release that bulb and that sucks it up into the pipette. And I don't worry about any of these little things here. Let me just dab them up for right now. But by the time I finish, you probably not going to see that. And people get too worried about mistakes. So this is a really good technique for freeing you up and making you get a little looser. So what I'm going to do here is I just gently squeeze. And as I squeeze, I draw my pipette into the shape that I want to make. Okay? Now, if you have um, too much ink in an area, you can go back and suck that up. I'll show you that in just a second. So there is a nice little flower shape. Okay? And like I said, for right now, I'm not trying to do anything specific. I'm not worrying about any air bubbles, any blotches, nothing like that. All I'm doing is just drawing shapes, letting the ink kind of go. I mean, there's only so much your control you're going to have over this. Okay? So you're going to have to let loose. Now see, there was a little blob that came out, but we don't get worried about things like that. We just keep going. So here I have a start to my field of daisies. Now I'm planning on drawing kind of a, and I am going to blot that up because I don't want that bleed too much to my other pages. Get a little more paint or ink, I should call it. I guess I get confused because I call it painting with the inks. This is kind of my little mountain scene here. Okay. And let's do one more. Give us something a little more mountainy. So this is a start here. And then, like I said now, if you got ink blobs, don't worry about it too much. Now what... If you, don't, if you don't mind the splatters, 
you can go ahead and see release by pushing in your bulb that does create splatters and then set it down where you got too much ink and suck some of that up okay I'm gonna draw a sun here so again squeeze and release and then release your bulb and suck up that ink okay so this gives you a really nice way I think to maximize your inks okay so there's my sun and then we're just going to do which hopefully we'll come back and do some colors okay very loosely don't get too wound up at the moment with how things look this is just the start of your page this is just your basic outlining okay so now that I got that if I want to I can come back and I start redrawing over things and when you start this like I said you're only going to have so much control but what that does is give you all those nice lovely loose lines I mean I think they're lovely anyway because I love the random look of this I love how it feels when it's all done and if you're watching this you might be liking how that looks too and want to learn how to replicate it well this is what I do when I'm making these see how I used up that extra ink over there and then just letting it splatter Oop, big old bubble there suck up some of that extra ink I'll draw a little different kind of flower not too much but I think daisies are just the easiest flower for everybody to draw I think they're used to drawing them so that's why I picked that for today's flower I figured drawing with the pipette alone <laughs> can be a little daunting for everybody so I was trying to find something nice and easy so you can see I'm pulling out the extra ink and then I'm just making squiggly loose drawings nothing difficult if you want to make some splatters just suck things up you can also make splatters by blowing some air on them sometimes doesn't when I want it to do but it will when I don't that's always the case okay go back on my hillside here okay now another thing that I like to do is not always cleaning out my pipette so I have brown that I had in there but I'm not going to worry about it now this orange has not been diluted so I'm just going to hopefully just put a little bit in here I'm just dotting it letting the color release in the centers of my flower again I'm not worrying if the inks run into the other colors I love all that effect I mean it gives you just such a nice blend it will make you feel more artsy <laughs> that's the case okay and I'm also because this is my son and my son's gonna have some different colors here so I'm going to start by just loosely taking the ink and just laying it out here okay I'm not doing too much of anything other than that at this moment okay so now let's take my yellow see how that turns yellow when it's sprayed on there 
And again, I'm just going to take my same pipette, squeeze it out first. By squeezing it out first, you're not going to put ink in here. See how the orange didn't mix in there? That's because I squeezed the air out and then I sucked it up. So then we're going to take some yellowy orange, which would be the next layer. Now, I also take my pages and help direct my ink flow sometimes. Okay. So we can start mixing that up a little bit. Bring that brown in a little bit too. There we go. And then of course you can always blot. Okay, release your colors. I see this this orange here I'm noticing isn't blending as well. This is an old one. So it's not made like the other inks to blend. But that's okay. Now I'm going to take some green. I'll start working on my hillside a little bit here. Now I am going to change. This so far has been orange, brown, and green in this pipe. I mean, excuse me. Orange, brown, and yellow in this pipe up. So now I'm going to switch to one for greens. This could be greens and browns. We're going to get some background going here. Like I said, this is probably going to be the orange and brown green dedication to this pipette. Take my page. Don't want it to go into the flowers. Now, there is one thing about pipette painting. You have to be a certain amount of patience. You have to have a certain amount of patience. It's scribbling and drawing. You're not doing with a brush that you get a lot of coverage because if you dump out too much ink at one time, you're going to have a mess to deal with. Not that it's undealable, but you still have a mess to deal with. So this technique takes a while to do. You can't be in a rush. It's almost meditative to me because when I'm doing it, I just sit here and play. I love watching the way I get white space peeping through. I love the fact that I can cover. And I also love the fact that I get a lot of splatters on this. I mean, splatters are something that we're always adding to our art so this kind of automatically adds to it and again don't worry so much if you have colors that bleed through to the other colors let them go um, be happy for them <laughs> they're mixing and making friends so be happy for them Unless you've got something that really is just the wrong color and you have to wipe it up. But I basically just kind of let it go. And I'm sucking up the other ink. So I'm going to work on this for a while. I've kind of explained what I'm doing, so now you can just kind of watch and see what I'm doing. And then I'll come back and talk about the outlining when I get to that point, okay?
okay so now everything has dried and I've already done the top half of my page here because if I do this on camera you're going to see my head and seeing my gray hair is more than I want to share with everybody so I have done the top part already with my journaling I use the hillsides and the separations of the lines for the hills for my journaling I like to fill the uh, line space there with the words so that's just a fun way to journal now <clears throat> Anytime that I am working with this technique, I do think that the outlining of your pipette drawings uh, really brings it out and makes it pop. So, I love my Sakura Pigma Sensei's that you can get in the Frosted Design Store, I admit it. Um, the size 1, which is your largest pen, is great for giving you a nice solid line don't really like it for the sketch lining though but it does give me a nice broad line and I do like that so I'm going to quickly just go through here and just throw out some lines again with this technique you don't want to be slow go fast and just throw it out there I think the looser you are the better this is And if you think, well, my drawing looks like uh, kindergarten art, well, you're really going to feel that way when you do this technique. But I think it's a lot of fun. And we can throw in some centers here on my little daisies. And again, you'll see I am not um, going slow, not trying to do anything. But see, look at that. That already helps it. Now I'd like to come back in with a six. And if you have any pens that are drying out, this is a great technique for this because it gives you a sketchier look, more of a shadowing. So all you can, I mean, as you can see, all I'm doing is just going randomly, a background, not being worried about things matching up. I love the colors and how everything is blended together when I was doing this I think they look really pretty so anyway sketch with your pen loosely around your images okay and that's all you have to do I hope that you show us your page and what you do if you do venture out into this technique I hope you show it with us over on the face of designs page we love seeing what everybody comes up with, especially when I do these wild things like this. Um, don't expect masterpieces if you're scared of it. Just do it, though, because doing things that are different for you really do help you grow as an artist. And I just think that we need to be more free to not worry about things as much as we do there's enough in life to worry about and not have to include your art with that so have fun play along with us and free yourself do some pipette drawing go crazy have fun talk to you later see you next sunday bye